What's up my Pungios? Andy, Andy Vlogs, excited to share with you guys this content here. The title suggests we're gonna be going over the Google doorbell. It just came out this last week. I haven't had a chance to, to review it because while well, my studio is kind of in shambles, uh, that's gonna be for another video if you wanna check out the vlog. Nonetheless, they kind of uh, just secretly released this. I got an email notification and I'm like, hey, I made a Eufy video. Might as well do a Eufy doorbell comparison with the Google doorbell. This is the HD version, battery powered. Uh, and so if you wanna check out that comparison video up above in the link or down below in the links in the description, you can check that out. Nonetheless, we're gonna be unboxing this device, put, doing a tutorial, showing you how to put it together and what that entails. Just to let you guys know, this is not a sponsored video. Google did not reach out to me, which I wish they did. Nonetheless, I did buy this with my own money, so you know that this review and tutorial is genuine. Let's go ahead and get into the unboxing. Very simple unboxing here. Google Nest doorbell is a lot bigger than the Eufy doorbell. I mean, just right off the bat, this thing is gigantic. It is huge. There's that huge button here. You've got the camera array here, which doesn't appear to be protected. That's a little concerning. You've got obviously sensors and microphones. Um, around the back side are the electronics where you're gonna be screwing it in, placing the different you know wires into it. This is where it's gonna be adhering to the door and the plate. Here's your USB type C charging port when you're gonna be taking it off and charging it every so often. I can just see my friend's kids just tapping and you know doing what they want with that. That lens, I don't really like how that's not really protected. There's a little pull tab here. Here are all the instructions, how to get started, how to set it up. Here's the charging cable. It does not come with a brick, it doesn't seem like. Again, that eco-friendly, minimalist type of approach. Here are your different mounting plates. Here's the angled mounting plate. I'm just gonna have it straight on, so we'll probably be using this mount plate. Here are the hardware, the screws for screwing it into your door, screws to affix it to the Google Nest doorbell. Here's your key, and then here is the chime. All right, folks, the first step in setting up the Google Nest doorbell is obviously to uh, plug it in. So we're gonna go over to an outlet and plug it in. You're plugging your phone right into the back of it, and then you're gonna find yourself an outlet to plug it in. I've got this nice little outlet that I'm gonna be placing it right into. It's always such a pain. Once you start charging it, it should show you that it's charging with that beeping light. Next is setting up the Google Nest doorbell in your home app. Um, there is a URL that I'm gonna to go to here to get the installation on how to set up the doorbell. The site is g.co slash nest slash install doorbell. And then you can click the nest doorbell battery and it brings you to a video. All right, my Pungios, some time has passed. I can't even get the instructions to work. I can't even get into the first step. Um, so as the instructions suggest, you wanna plug your device in directly into the plug. And I've been doing that I've tried a bunch of different sources of power and it just goes to a solid blue light which won't allow me to uh, connect to the Google Home app. From the Google Home app, you're gonna add a device, a new device, add it. I, I have the speaker device. I don't, I don't understand. I have to go and plug all my speakers then because it keeps grabbing this Google Home Mini. No, that's not what I was doing. Gosh dang it. Okay, I've unplugged every Nest Mini in the house. There's no way that it cannot pick it up. All right, let's see if it'll pull it up. I have zero Nest Minis plugged in. Okay. Ah, I can't even find it. This is frustrating, I'll be honest. None of these are here. Nest doorbell battery. Okay, so you have to go in and search. It won't actually make itself available. That makes sense now. Now I'm moving off screen. You can kind of see my butt. I've blurred out the QR code guys because I don't want you stealing my information. Here is the Nest doorbell. 
it took so long for me to figure out how to do this. It didn't say in the instructions that you have to go in and add it as a doorbell. I thought it would automatically um, grab it because that's usually how it is. That took me way too long. Doorbell's plugged in. Now it's gonna connect to it directly. <laughs> what, there may be a problem. What does that even mean? Now what do I do? What do I do? Reset my device? Okay. Gosh. This is so frustrating, Google. This is not easy. This has not been a simple process. I've been at it for like two hours now. Okay, I'm going back in the doorbell. I'm going back in the Nest doorbell. I'm not gonna rescan the QR code. Okay, so I've reset the device. I've reset the app and it's showing up there now. Clean room doorbell. Let's go finish setting up this device. Let's see if that works. Okay, it's, it's, it's connected to the device. We're gonna put it in the clean room. Now it's saying the update finished. That's so weird, it just timed out and killed it. This has been all but a friendly process. Okay, so this is where you're gonna decide whether you're gonna use the battery or the wired terminal. So I'm gonna use the wired terminal. This is how you do it, this is what you need. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and cut the, the recording and then we're gonna install it on the doorbell. You can see here that I've already installed, you know, on a different video, the Eufy Security Padlock, I highly recommend this. It's got a fingerprint touch, as well as a you know the touch screen with the numbers to unlock your door. Very, very awesome product to pair with the Eufy Security. Check the links down in the description if you're interested in that or for the tutorial video. Okay, so once you've removed your previous doorbell, I have a smart doorbell. I also had a wired doorbell like that's regular. You're gonna wanna come up here and you're gonna wanna push this up to as far as you can. Now, uh, is that a spider? That's a spider. It's a bug that was living in between it. That's interesting. I'm gonna go ahead then and go in here and you wanna make sure that the G is up and you wanna have the hole here and then we're gonna be putting a hole right here. So I'm gonna mark it respectively. So if you've got stucco or some other type of material besides wood here, you're probably gonna wanna have the anchor I don't need it, I'm not going to be using it, so I'm not going to. Try to keep it as center as I can. Off this ledge here. All right, next step is to uh, connect the wires here. As you can see, they're rounded. So we're gonna take these little things and we're gonna push in these buttons and feed the wires in to the respective terminal. Now, it doesn't matter which wire you put in to which because it just doesn't. That's what they say. We're just gonna place that in there. Okay, that grabs on. This one, same thing. Press in the button feed in. There it is. Okay. Once you've done that, you're going to want to give you some room by pushing these wires back into the wall. Now that you've uh, slightly unscrewed them, you're going to be fitting them right where the screws are with the little hooks. This is a little more difficult than I thought. Can't really see the angle that I'm in. There we go, there's one. Let's 
Let's go for the second one. Okay, so there isn't enough space. I'm gonna have to unscrew this. Put the wedge in there. Okay, now that we've got the, the wedge, we've got some clearance here to be able to put this in here. I do wanna make sure that I do have it tightened best I can. So we will tighten this top one a little bit more. Okay, now we've got the room. Now we're gonna be able to put it on from the bottom up. There we go. You gotta pull it down. You gotta pull the unit down. Okay, it's saying to push the bottom in first. Click it and then pull down on the whole unit. There we go. All right, there it is. That wasn't very easy. Okay, now it's tightly in. Okay, now that I've got the doorbell installed, we're here on the Google app and we're gonna hit next. That's the live feed. Why is it horizontal? There's the live feed, but it's horizontal. You should now see live video if you need a better angle of things on the left or the right. How come it's long ways? Green line meetings cameras on. Live viewing when it's blinking. Choose whether you want to turn on video recording or not. It says the Nest doorbell comes with three hours of event history. Depending on local laws, you may need to display a notice. Adjust your mic settings when audio recording is off. The mic microphone should still let you hear the live audio. Do I have an electric chime? If the chime is muffled, make sure there's nothing interfering with it. I went ahead and disconnected the uh, reverter or whatever from my old uh, chime from my Ufi, and now if I push it again, it's gonna have the actual chime from the door. Okay, so we can turn on visitor announcements. I'm gonna turn that on, so when we hit the doorbell, they should say, hey, someone's at the door. Evie is gonna test it out for us. Someone's at the clean room door. I like it. Okay, now that everything's all set, let's go ahead and ring the doorbell. We can pull it up from Google. It'll show live. I can do a quick response. That's cool. Okay, now that we've got it all installed here, I'm gonna move over to the side and show you some of the features of the device. What's nice about this device is it shows, you know, straight in the room that you put it in. You can see that the front door lock is the Eufy and then it says the clean, clean room door. When you click right into it, you can definitely see its feed. Uh, one thing that I don't like is that, you know, it's not technically 16 by nine. It's a vertical view. You can go in here on the tab on the side and you can see the history. It's got kind of this full timeline of how it recorded and showing you all these different events. I don't really like it that way. I like it um, more of um, how it shows you by event. If you go into full history then, you can now see with a thumbnail um, all the different things that it's showing you. Now from the live, you can speak through it. Into more, you can go into QuickTime, which shows how long you mute your door. You can do quick responses to just leave it at the front door, or you can turn your camera on and off. At the top right, you can mess with the cog and show you all of the device information. I'm gonna go into notifications. It does push notifications, away only notifications, only receive notifications when the camera is on and presence sensor indicates no one's home. I don't wanna leave that on. I wanna have it view everything. So I'm gonna have it uh, detect, uh, no, I don't wanna detect motion. I'm gonna leave it from motion. I actually don't want it to detect vehicles either. The battery here, you can show that it's uh, unlimited because it's plugged in, it's wired in. And then you can change the different sa savings settings, which I don't really care about. Events, we can go into events and show you all the events that it's gonna grab and show you. Uh, I'm gonna turn vehicles off because I don't want vehicle moving. 
I'm going to go into video and show you all the different history and whatnot. You can go in and show no video history. You can show video history. Um, we can do sensors, wake up sensitivity, video call at quality. We're going to have the max, uh, the maximum event. You can do up to three minutes. I'm going to do 30 seconds, which is fine. Night vision's always on. Status light blinking is always on and default. I like that. So I've changed it to the max resolution and this should give me a little bit better resolution here now that it's connecting. Um, you can zoom in. It's got 6x zoom, which is pretty cool. Very poor quality though that I can tell. Okay, now I'm going to show you here asking Google for it to show the door. Hey Google, Show me the clean room door camera. Okay, streaming the clean room door. Now you can see there's the clean room door. I don't like how it's vertical. I really don't. I can hit talk and I can talk directly from it. Hey, how's it going? That's not responding. There we go. Whatever. All right, well, there is your guide here on how to set up the Google Nest doorbell. A little convoluted, you can kind of hear me in my frustration not really being able to put it together and fasten it to the door, having issues with the wires because those little plugs are too big, having to put in that, you know, a little stopper or that extra spacer that leaves distance between the doorbell so it's not flush anymore. Those are a few things that you have to keep in mind depending on what you want to choose, you know, as a doorbell. I think it's a fine product. I like how it's fully integrated with Google. Uh, it wasn't easy to set up and find it in the Google Home app. The instructions were garbage. It took me over an hour to figure it out. I even went through all the video tutorials and it never said that you had to search by the type of thing. I thought it would just randomly be discovered because that's typically how it is with these Google the pro products. They discover them automatically. So with that in, in mind, I don't really think this is worth the $179. I think they're overcharging you. You can get a higher quality device. You can get an easier to install device from Eufy for a cheaper price. With that in mind, if you want everything Google, if you like having the Google all around, it would make sense. But I think, I think Google's made a mistake here in pricing it at $179. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to get this. With that said, folks, here's my review. This is my opinion. Take it or leave it. Let me know in the comments if you're having the same problems as I did. Check down the links in the description for products that we used today and we talked about. If you like this content, hit that like button, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.